so what do you guys think of that intro? That was, that, that was nice, right? Like, that was, geez, I stayed up way too late working on that last night, which is why I absolutely didn't meet my sleep goal. Uh, hopefully that'll, uh, that'll change today. Cause man, I, I, uh, definitely felt it. I actually had to call a little bit of a, of an audible on today's workout and just, just kind of keep it, keep it simple, but got, got my grappling in, got my, uh, got my rise 45 in. So I am happy about that here on day two. So, um, I'm going to call another audible on, um, on discussion topics and sorry about the lighting. It's, uh, I, I just don't feel like getting up and turning the overhead on right now. Um, yeah, Audible on, on, on kind of the programming. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about, I guess, daily reflections, right? Because, uh, before we dive into the topic, because, Hey, we're actually here to talk about, uh, talk about, talk about what I'm learning on this, on this journey, if you will. So, and so far I've learned that I'm horrible about estimating calories, not, not, not over or un, well, I guess under because, uh, you know, I, I, I calculated a target and based on kind of what I had been doing before all this, you know, same, similar kinds of working out, uh, different macros though, way different macros, which might have something to do with it. And man, I, I was, I was starched yesterday. I mean, after grappling and then after doing the workout, uh, I mean, I, and then of course staying up late, but I mean, but you know how, have you ever like eaten really under where you should be calorically and, and you know you know things like you can't sleep for example i mean that's uh, that's you, you kind of you know what that feels like there's a very specific feeling to that and that i was i was definitely feeling that yesterday so i'm gonna go a little higher today uh still counting of course i mean i actually want to find a number that lets me sleep and and uh and lets me perform because you know I didn't, I didn't do bad today but i mean it took me you know, grappling, for example, like I can, I can, I can tell I'm off when it takes me a, a couple tries to get into the drill. Like, you know, for example, like if I, you know, I mean, I'll be, I'll be watching coach do the drill and then I will try and do the drill and miss like the, not, not even be able to get it. Like I'll just miss the, the complete first step. And that, that definitely happened today. So it took, took me, took me a couple runs to get into it. So I'm definitely, uh, not, not where I should be nutritionally. So I, I, I don't know if that counts as hitting my nutrition goal though, because I, I did, um, I did hit the number I set out, you know, the number of the macros I set out, but I guess it's just wrong. So, um, yeah. So, we're, so yeah, that's, that's the experiment. Um, cool. All right. So into today's topic. So we, so like I said, yesterday, week one, we're going to talk about, you know, we're just going to get into it, little introduction, little boilerplate. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk about me today. Um, that's the most unfascinating subject on the planet. I realize that, but, uh, you know, um, Another great podcast you guys should listen to, uh, Endless Endeavor by Greg uh, Anderson. And some of you might be familiar with that name. If not, Greg Anderson is the Port of Seattle police officer who, back when all this stupidity started, made a, um, made a video about how, you know, police really shouldn't be, should be upholding, the, you know, their, their constitutional vows and shouldn't be arresting people for surfing, you know. And, you know, it went viral and then the governor of Washington had him fired. And uh, I mean, that's... That's not an official story, but kind of like hearing how things go down and knowing how the governor of Washington is, that's, that's the story I'm going to stick to. Um, and he started a podcast and, uh, it's well, disclaimer, it's very, very red pill. So if you're sensitive, easily offended, don't do not, uh, except it's one of my favorite podcasts now, but, uh, yeah, if, if you're easily offended, don't just, just skip it. But, um, he, um, in his first episode of his podcast, you know, he, he kind of said a similar thing. He's like, you know, I don't really want to talk about myself, but you know, as more people come into this space, you know, it may, it, it might be just nice to set, you know, use that to, I guess, set, um, what's, what's a good way to put it to, to, to just kind of like, like set a framework for why, why I'm here talking about all this and why, why you should even care and why you should listen to me. I mean, cause the reality is I, I you know, I, I've, I've done some stuff. Uh, I, I know some things. So, um, yeah. So, and, and, and this way, you know, I, I don't have to, I don't have to answer questions or about, Hey, what about, you know, your Batman origin story or what, what, you know, why, 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 why this? I mean, or, you know, why, why, why thing that, you know, why, why developmental thing that, that led you to this belief? So, I mean, I'm not going to, and obviously I, I can't cover all that because I don't, I don't know what questions people are going to have, but I figure maybe if we just do a, uh, kind of just a basic, hi, how are you? Um, I am X. This is what I've done. You know, so um, th that'll help. So yeah. And in the spirit of keeping this short, uh, let's get onto that. So hi, I'm Seth. And um, 
Yeah, like I said, my, my Batman origin story actually isn't that interesting. It's basically a guy with too much time and money on his hands decides to, to spend his resources on the things he likes doing. So I, I guess the question I could answer is, well, why, why fitness? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So first of all, um, from a professional standpoint, even though I'm kind of, if you've been following some of my rants about the fitness industry recently, I've, I've kind of started backing away from the idea of a, I, I guess of a, of the line fitness pro. That's, that's not something I'm looking, I'm interested in anymore too much, but back, let, let's jump back to about, uh, it's Christmas of 2014. And like I said, I, you know, I've been in the tech industry for 25 years. Uh, at, at that point, I guess I'd only been in the tech industry for maybe 20 years for coming up on 19, 20 years. Um, and had a great job, really, you know, it was, it was a fun job. It was kind of like the, one of the pinnacles of my career, but on a personal level, I would say I was at the lowest point I've ever been at. Um, just not in a good place personally at all. And of course, you know, when you get to that point and, you know, I was, I was approaching 40, I was what, just 30, 38, 36. Yeah. So, you know, in, in prime midlife crisis territory, and, uh, you know, I kind of thought, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? I'm obviously not happy right now. And I don't know that I want to keep feeling like this for however many more years I have. And so, so, you know, you kind of start thinking about like all the things you really like doing. And like I said, I mean, at the time I was, you know, didn't really have a ton of overhead and had way more, was, was making way more money than I needed. Cause thank you, Silicon Valley. And so I thought, well, I mean, I like this. I like training. I like lifting. Uh, I love, I love, you know, doing jujitsu. I was doing Kajikembo at the time. I was doing kickboxing. I was doing a lot, a lot, a lot of just like combat sports. I was like, well, I really like all this stuff. Um, and I had actually trained some folks, uh, 2006 ish, maybe written some programs for some people, taught some folks how to deadlift, things like that. And, and I realized, you know, and I remember like, I really enjoyed that. But at the time, you know, I, I didn't have any formal training. I mean, I did what every bro meathead does. You know, you read T Nation, you read the articles on Elite FTS, and then you try and kind of piece things together, right? Don't lie. You, you've, you've done that. No, if, if, you're, if you're of my ilk, you, you did the same thing. So don't, don't, don't front. Um, so, but, but so I said, hey, why not, um, <clears throat> why not kind of see what's actually out there um, as far as, you know, fitness and fitness education? And it, it actually kind of happened accidentally because I didn't really know where to start. And I remember, so I remember seeing on it had been, you know, on it ads on Facebook, but I didn't realize they were an education company. You know, I thought they were just some kind of weird lifestyle company. I didn't even know they were a supplement company. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, their, their ads were just, maybe I just wasn't paying attention to the ads that much, but I, yeah, I just didn't really get it. And uh, so I was actually in living in Silicon Valley at the time but I was coming back up to Seattle on weekends. Every show I often do things like DJ shows. And as it was, I was actually coming up to Seattle to do that. It was March of 2015. And I, I, let's see, how does the story go? So the story goes, a good friend of mine had, uh, had forwarded me the on it podcast with Kelly Sturette. And I was, I was watching that. And, and so of course that was a great podcast, mainly because Kelly Sturette's, you know, is a super intelligent guy. And so I was like, okay, this is, this is pretty legit. You know, maybe, maybe there's something to this on it thing. And so I kept watching more and more of their, um, of their podcast. And I came to one with John Wolf and, uh, listening to that guy talk. It was funny because at the time I was really into a, a Russian training system called Sistema and don't at me all you real martial artists um, until you've gone and trained with somebody like Martin Wheeler or, or Vlad or, or, or Sergey, just, just don't. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to, and I'm not going to get into it here. But a lot of the things John was saying, and I understand now why this was, you know, given his background in tack fit, really kind of lined up with a lot of the good things I had taken from Sistema. So I thought, huh, that's really cool. Let me, let me dig into this on it a little more. And as it were, you know, went to their website, looked around, and as it were, they were doing their, I believe was, at the time it was called the on it level one. This was before they had found, before it was called foundations. So they were doing their on it level one in Seattle. And it was the weekend, like I said, it was weekend. I was going back to Seattle to, 
play a show. Yeah, I was going to DJ. I was, was going to DJ for a, I used to DJ for an industrial promotion here called Mechanismus. Uh, great guys. Um, and they're still at it today. So what, what up, dudes? And um, so just completely on a whim, I was like, huh, well, let, let's go to this thing. I have no idea what this is like. I have no idea what this entails. And uh, so I went, it was at, uh, some of you fitness folks know uh, Luca, Luca Hosvar of uh, Vigor Ground. This was at the old Vigor Ground. I'm, I'm getting really Seattle specific, really, well, maybe not. I mean, Luca's a pretty well-known guy. But, and uh, yeah, went, went, met, met John Wolf, met, uh, met a great guy named Travis Janeway, who I'm still kind of in contact with. He's, he's actually, who's actually just uh, about an hour and a half away from me in Bellingham. And uh, yeah, had my mind totally blown. I mean, you know, I was like, wow, this is completely... This this is not like any fitness stuff, any training stuff I know. And so I kind of went down the on it rabbit hole for a good couple years. Uh, I mean, you know, I took all their courses. I took all their courses twice. I took some of their courses three times. I uh, I ended up going to a bunch of other courses because I learned about things through on it. So things like FRC, Box and Burn. Um, let's see, I think, uh, what's another one? The FMS. Well, the FMS was more... I sort of knew about the FMS, but then I ended up uh, mentoring under one of the Onnit master coaches, Sarah Jameson. What's up, Sarah? Uh, Movolution, check her out if you're into mobility. And then she kind of sent me down the FMS path, which again, don't at me about that. I think the FMS is a great tool. I still use it. Um, FMS is one of those things that you kind of have to really dig into it and understand that it's not an answer. It just kind of helps you, it kind of helps you know what other questions to ask. And I think that was the problem with you. And I'm getting really specific here. I'm sorry. I, I do this. And, and if you guys want to hear, kind of hear me dissect or at least what I think about the FMS sometime, let me know. I'm happy to talk about it. But um, yeah, a lot of courses. And then through those courses, I, you know, I found out about other courses, things like animal flow and, uh, you know, strong first and ground force method. And, you know, and, and then eventually some of the more modern stuff that I've done like K3. And so I guess this is a very long way of saying that, you know, I started completely on a whim in fitness and then just kind of said, wow, this is really cool. I really enjoy kind of learning all this stuff. And, I, and at some point, you know, I was building a fitness business, you know, I'd, I'd worked with some clients and um, yeah, recently I kind of, for a couple different reasons. So actually I started to kind of drop off a couple years ago and I'm going to try to keep this under like 20 minutes. So I better wrap this up soon, but um yeah, so I kind of started to drop off of building my own sort of movement, mobility, training business uh, a couple of years ago just because I, I don't want to say imposter syndrome, but that's kind of a bitch thing to say. Um, and it's actually not completely accurate. So I'm, I'm not really sure what... I'm not really sure how to describe it. I mean, I am, but that's kind of one of those. I, I don't know that I want to air that dirty laundry publicly, so I, I won't. Um, but I had kind of been drifting. It's funny because 2020 was actually initially a goal I had set out for myself to, you know, things like maybe think about opening a facility. But I think I want to say maybe around 2019, I kind of started drifting a bit just because, you know, I'd, I'd been through some weird stuff in the fitness industry and you know, I'd made some weird investments and, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not going to point fingers. It, you know, I mean, we all make our own decisions and, you know, I should have done due diligence and I didn't. And, um, and then fast forward to, you know, last year, again, there were just some things with the fitness industry I saw that I just really didn't like. And having worked in the games at the video game industry and already been kind of through one industry that sort of, said one thing and then did another that I realized was completely at odds with me. I was like, okay, I don't want to go through this again. And so thankfully, you know, I'd made some cool connections in the fitness industry and a uh, guy named Sam Pogue, which I know a lot of you listening to this know, who used to work at Onnit, used to work at True Coach, hit me up and said, hey, I got this fitness app thing that I want to talk to you about. And, and it's funny because uh, when, when the last couple of years, a lot of people have been approaching me about that. And I, I'm going to... I'm going to sound like a total like bougie douche and say this, but it's like, you know, if you just want me to write your program, your training app, it's like, I can do it, but don't, don't, don't ask me. Cause I'm going to charge you way more than it's worth just because I'm not the guy that you want doing that. I mean, I, that, I'll just say it. That, that's just not what I do. I mean, I can do it, but it's, it's, it's not what I do. Like find, find some kid fresh out of, fresh out of coding boot camp and have them do it. Um, yeah, it's like that. 
Um, go, <laughs> right, yeah, that, like I said, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to sound like a douche and that's fine. Um, go look at my LinkedIn. Um, anyway, so the thing that Sam pitched to me was really awesome. And that's what is now, you know, you see me refer to the choice point. That's what we're working on now. And I don't want to talk about it too much because we're still kind of sussing a lot of stuff out, but what I know about it and the stuff that I've worked on for it so far is really cool and I think it's going to really make some waves but um, as part of this we went through a process with our our chief scientist a guy named John Baker who used to be the the head of applied mental skills for the Chicago Cubs and just recently got a pretty big promotion outside of in another org and I won't say what you know maybe he can come on and talk about that but he took us kind he took us all sort of through the paper version of what we're trying to do with a choice point and I wrote, I, I made an Instagram post about this. I might, I might maybe, I'll, I'll maybe link it or something. But um, I kind of realized, wow, there's this thing that I really want to do if I'm going to do fitness that I've kind of been avoiding for years. I mean, this is something that like, if I go back and think about it, like I've always had this thought, you know I mean? Because cause here's the thing. I only ever got into fitness a long time ago, like for myself, because I mean, I wish I could say it was for things like, oh, cause I wanted to, I wanted to get laid. I wanted to whatever. No, it's cause, cause I'm, I was a total fucking martial arts nerd and I want to be good at martial arts. You know, I was doing a, I was, I was training Capoeira at the time for you guys know that's you know, like Brazilian breakdance fighting. And I wanted to be good at that. And the only way I was getting good at that was to learn how to get strong and lose weight. And so, so that's kind of, you know, so I sort of applied everything I know about, you know, programming and research and, and I, I looked at kind of, and I, and I sort of took that same analytical approach to learning how to train and, um, and that just kind of opened that whole door. But realistically getting back to what I, what I was going to say, it's, is that, you know, I kind of realized, Hey, you know, yeah, running a martial arts program would be really cool. And, you know, and, and talking to John, I kind of realized, wow, if I were going to do that, I, I really want to run a jujitsu program one day. And it's kind of, it's kind of good because it's, year that that's years off you know so i've turned and especially like in this post you know world we're, we're in there's a lot you have to think about when i, th I think when you're gonna when you're gonna start something like that and so it's kind of a cool spot to be in because i can sort of just lay back and learn for a bit you know and learn a lot of things but at the same time i can keep sort of refining what i know about coaching and training and movement optimization and all that good stuff. And yeah, and hopefully at some point in the near future, I'll get on that path. I mean, right now, I think it's really weird because of all this craziness, you know, who knows, I may not have a jujitsu school in a couple months. So that that would be awful. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm starting to drift a bit. I'm, I'm a little space and I need to eat. So I'm going to wind it up there. If you guys have questions about this, I mean, you know, we could talk about this on FIF. Uh, you could DM me, uh, you know, I mean, you know, I'll have the question, I'll have the questionnaire up as soon as this goes up tonight. So that's where I'm going to leave it. And I'm wow. And I'm just under 20 minutes. So yeah, thanks for listening. That's, that's like this little segment of me in a nutshell. And that's what I got. Cheers.